nightmare. Hello and welcome to Cinema Subculture where we discuss everything strange, obscure and downright messed up in the world of movies. My name's Gary. And I'm Simon. Is there a, a plea that you would like to give to our good listeners? If you're listening right now, please uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Uh, give us a wee like if you enjoy the content and even uh, ring the bell uh, if you want to keep up to date with everything that we're releasing on the channel. Uh, that'd be lovely. Uh, and I just want to throw in, if there's anything that we've done in the past, tapes of content, I know we've been experimenting with different things um, in the past that you really like, do you want to see more of, or if there's something we're not doing that you would like to see some of, uh, just drop us a comment in, in one of the videos and we'll see what we can do. We're very open to experimenting with different formats. Um, and yeah, we just want to make sure we can get the content out to people. Okay, let's get on with the show. Today we're going to talk about American Movie. And American Movie is a documentary feature from 1999, directed by Chris Smith. It follows Mark Borchard, an aspiring filmmaker from Milwaukee, as he struggles to complete his first feature film, aided by his friends and family. The film won the Grand Jury Prize for Documentary at the Sundance Film Festival and has since become a cult favourite. So Gary, how did you first hear about this film? Now, I first stumbled across this movie late night on television. Okay. Sometime around 2003. Right, okay. Four. I'm going to put my cards on the table here. I think this film is a masterpiece. Um, it's a film I regularly go back to. And it's, it's more than a film. It's, it's, this film has had quite a profound impact on me. And I think its its greatness is its ability to tell a very small story, but also to speak about uh, kind of quite large, profound things, but do that kind of effortlessly without being heavy-handed about it. So yeah, I'll stop there for the moment and let you tell me your thoughts on watching the film for the first time. Well, I, I had never heard of this film um, until you suggested we watch it, um, and yeah, I yeah I kind of love it as well, man. It's 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 pretty like, yeah. It was really surprised. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I didn't watch, you know, I didn't had seen a trailer for it, for it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I, I just I kept, kept I found myself like, having to keep reminding myself that these weren't characters they weren't actors you know what i mean they're, they're like these are real people and it was just so endearing in certain places it was just um and but it's so funny like i described it to someone recently i was talking about it. um it's kind of like you know the way like the, the office what the office does for like office work right like as in makes it that bit like you know can concentrates it down into this thing where these little funny things that maybe have happened in your real life if you've ever worked in an office but they're all happening at once in this kind of scenario, in this kind of sitcom thing, this kind of does that for like making a film, um, you know. And it's like it's, you can't quite believe that these are just real people, but um, well, I think you can, yeah, you get to a point where you, you can, and it, it kind of shows its uh, you know, it, it shows its heart, if you know what I mean, um, as we get into it. But no, I thought it was um, it was brilliant. I really did. I laughed like throughout it, and um, and found myself like um, like going from like kind of not hating the characters, but them, them grating me really the wrong way, um, to like kind of falling in love with them, like, you know, throughout it and really, you know, and really kind of, I mean, so much so that I'm like, as soon as I was done, I was like, I had to find out what has happened to these, you know, what right, these okay. people are up to, you know what I mean? I just, I had to know that they were all right in some way or whatever, you know, that yeah. way. Um, so I, I, I thought that was a really telling of it. Um, so it, did, it left it left a kind of um, a mark on me. And I've been kind of telling a few people, I showed my wife the trailer because I had to let her see, um, a couple of the characters from the, from the trailer and stuff like that, and I, I showed it to a, a work colleague, um, and he, he was kind of not reacting very much to it. And I was like, because he's you know made films as well, um, and I was like that, but it's you know it's real people, and he's like, what? It's real people? He <laughs> couldn't quite believe that it wasn't just uh, actors, you know, portraying characters. But oh, well, that's I think that's everyone's reaction at first because I thought that as well. I'm like, this can't be be real. Yeah, people. yeah that's exactly um... what you thought. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that's undoubtedly the the strength of the film is the characters, um, mm. because the direction and the actual filmmaking technique of the documentary is very minimal. There's not a lot going on. It's mm. very unobtrusive, fly in the wall, uh, just sort of following these people, um, and 
the filmmakers have managed to come across just these bunch of like um, incredible characters. Um, obviously, Mark Blotchard <laughs> is your main protagonist. Uh, his friend Mike Shank is hilarious, Jeez, and Mike. Uncle Bill, uh, my favourite. Mm. The character of Mark, who has this kind of unshakable confidence, no matter how many things go wrong, he's going to get his film made. And he's got a kind of ambition that sort of seems unrealistic. When it's, But also you get these really great monologues mm. of him driving around where he, he's also very self-reflective and he knows that um, you know he calls his life a failure and he knows he's not really done much with his life. Um, so... I find that really powerful stuff. Um, but what's great as well is you have Mark's optimism and you have the character of Uncle Bill who is this like really <laughs> kind of extreme kind of cynic, existential kind of like uh, everything's uh, terrible <laughs> kind of attitude. And those two as the main characters kind of really um, uh, balance yeah. each other as kind of, um, you know, opposites. To, to drive the movie. Uncle Bill was sort of giving Mark money to fund his movie while but also being like completely depressed and um, pessimistic about its future. <laughs> <laughs> Which eh, is like really yeah. hilarious. But yeah, eh, so as I said, like the characters are so great and um, yeah, it just adds up, to, adds up to like really hilarious, emotional, mm. sad, inspiring mm-hmm. eh, content yeah yeah I, I, it's really great stuff i mean so you know you know like my background and you know like what i've done like i've tried to make films in the past and stuff like that so there's a there's definitely a kind of um i can like a lot of mark's character resonates with me um right down to him like you know obviously knowing exactly how to do pretty much every job he needs done um, and roping in friends and trying to get them to understand what the, he needs done and you know that is so, you know i've been there and, and and it's it's really interesting seeing that him trying to do it and <laughs> and i mean don't get me wrong um, and yeah so no offense because none of my friends are quite as uh as backwards as some of his friends <laughs> um but like you know just for like even like the the uh can you make sure everyone's got brown gloves line <laughs> i mean that that was i've been there i'm pretty sure i've been there and it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, was, that was genius um but like you know so as much as it resonates and i can empathize with with these kind of plight and what he's trying to do and why he's trying to do it um it's really heartbreaking because you know this is all he has you know i was fortunate enough to not be in that situation that, that this that it was something that was a passion of mine that i really was trying to do at the time um but it wasn't it, you know, it, it was, wasn't was everything I had. It wasn't my, my be-all and end-all. I wasn't sinking, like, you know, thousands of pounds into or, or, or borrowing it from people and stuff like that, you know. But this is literally all this guy has. You know, he's, he's behind on all these bills. He's um, He's got his kids. He's split up from a partner. You know, he's and, and he's pretty much saying this is his last chance. Like, he has to do it. He has to make it. He doesn't have any option, you know. And it's really heartbreaking. Mm. And it, it does come across in, in his kind of determination and, and kind of his passion for it. And I think that's... What bolsters a lot of the because the, there's like kind of semi-professional or professional people that get involved with with a um, northwestern the 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 feature he's trying to make, um, and I think they can just feel that off him, you know, and and like you know one of the guys says like you know this guy's been trying to make this film for however many years it is, and he just and you know he wrote this whole thing about this is his life and it's his passion and he just wants to make a feature film and he's like yeah i can i can sacrifice a couple of weekends to help this guy do this you know what i mean and it's like you know you're like that's awesome that's just really sweet um we come to the talking about the we can talk about the character mike in a bit because uh, i think mike might be my favorite but um <laughs> but uncle bill oh geez man i was i was conflicted with with uncle bill initially not his character but the, the kind of the the way that it was it kind of come across initially that they were really pressuring him into giving Mark money. Like, um, right. and I don't know, like, it was really like they were badgering him to take him to the bank and stuff like that. And he's like, <laughs> what would they, I don't even know what you're doing. Like, <laughs> he says, I don't know what you're doing with my money. And they're like, oh no, you'll have to sign to get it out. Yeah, but I don't know what any of this stuff is basically. Yeah. Um, and I mean, what turned me around on that was, was, was when he brought him to the house for Thanksgiving. You know, I mean that. I think you saw a different mm. side to the Mark and Bill relationship there, 
um, yeah. which I felt that you were getting more, less of the Mark bravado that you get for the, from the rest of the film because he does, you know, does come across as, across as he's, he's, he's not preaching, but he's, he's trying to, you know, he's, he's trying to walk and talk the, the part, isn't he? You know, for most of it. Mm. But I think you, you really got the kind of sweetness of their relationship and the kind of um, it really did want to make really did want to make Bill the next big producer, you know what I mean? That was what he was trying to do. Yeah, it was a way to get the, the films made, the money and stuff like that, but he's like, but I'm going to do this for you, and this is what, that, you know, we're, we're all going to make out of this like kind of thing. He really did believe that, and that was what he was trying to do, so that, that was really sweet, and you kind of saw that he was he was taking care of him, taking him for his, his I assume, yearly bath? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, like, yeah, like when he's, he's talking to his, his girlfriend, is it Joan? He's talking to his girlfriend. She's like, all right, like, where is he? Is he soaking and hitting the bath? He's like, oh, yeah, he's under strict supervision. She's like, who is supervising him? And he's like, me. And she laughs. She's like, what's funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> he's like nowhere near him. Poor man's probably drowned in the, the bathtub. Oh uh, no, it was um, yeah. So, and then yeah, we go to Mike. Oh my god! Like, like, I really had to look up when this film came out because, like, you know, you look at Mark and Mike, and especially some of Mike's antics, it's very Beavis and Butthead. Like, you know, like just the laughing right. and stuff like that, and the kind of and the stories and the kind of not look like, even just the animation in Beavis and Butthead where the, the characters don't move very much like Mike's just his face almost doesn't right. <laughs> move or animate um, but oh yeah some of his <laughs> when he started when he goes in and at Thanksgiving and it, Mark's asking why he looks so happy and just that whole yeah. conversation just <laughs> broke me and then it cuts to him in, <laughs> in the basement or wherever in the, in the dark. He's like, I won $50. I don't want those guys to know. I actually, I was yeah. watching it at night like, and, and my wife was in bed and I burst out laughing and I'm, I'm really yeah. surprised I never woke up because I was just like, <laughs> it just really burst me. Um, oh, yeah, and yeah, and even like, you know, his monologues later on about finding Mark because they wanted to drink vodka together and he was really angry, mm. couldn't find anyone who, who would drink vodka with him. Um, yeah. And then he's, he's hospital monologue about, about him, dro- you know, dropping acid and stuff like that in the hospital. <laughs> they said that he was the worst patient they ever had. Uh, it was just, it was genius. But I think as well, from the the Mark's filmmaking, I think the film has quite interesting things to say about creativity and, like, the struggles Mm. of of doing something creative um it's not just about uh, making the thing almost making the thing is easier than finishing the thing whatever it is you're doing yeah because i yeah, think yeah. part of mark's problem is he's the stumbling block to getting things done a lot of the time mm-hmm. even though you see in the film him struggling to get people to help him uh i think a lot of the time he's afraid of kind of finishing a project mm-hmm. Because, like, it's that idea of it's kind of easy to say, oh, I'm making a movie. But then once the thing's mm-hmm. finished, you have to have that. That's when you're exposed. You say, here's my film. Mm-hmm. And then that's when yeah. you get you can get um, people are going to say, it's shit. They're going to attack your yeah. art. Uh, whereas, like, if you say it so- somehow sounds um, cooler, uh, just to say, like, you're making... A music or you're making a, a, a film or whatever it is so I think that that's a fear that comes across uh, in the film especially because well, what happens in the film they start out making a feature film Northwestern which uh, they can't get done um, so they go back to finishing a short film that Mark had started earlier called Coven or Coven mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> that sounds like Oven Man <laughs> that doesn't work Um so and then when the scene when that he actually finishes, uh, Coven, he's like really depressed, um, rather than being yeah that was hard, yeah. That was, yeah um so mm. I think it has got some really interesting things to say about that the creative process and actually how hard it is yeah. to you know to say settle on a project and say right that's it yeah and I think like for me it's like there's a lot of layers to that that part is you, you know him in, him finishing that project um because it comes down to the very thing that i think stopped him from finishing it at that point or had stopped him finishing it up to that point 
was what he needed for the next one, which was basically to try and get some funding, to try and raise some mm. money to be able to do the next film, right? To do his, to do his feature. Um, but you see it in that that scene where where um, he's going over the the numbers with the with the with the you know the camera crew and explaining how much you know how many copies he would need to sell to to make the money back, and he basically you know he, he scores it all out and stuff. But I think that's what's stopping him. Eh? Like that's one of the things that's really holding him back is he. If he finishes it, he has to try and make the that money back for for Uncle Bill and and to get to the next mm. thing. You know, what I mean, it became this hurdle he had to get over. Mm. Um, yeah, I, and I think you just it is often a lot easier. It's it's easier to say you you are making something, but it's easier, a lot easier to start something sometimes like that when you have like a kind of a solid idea and on lots of levels, like from your own kind of passion for the project and maybe something doesn't go your way halfway through and you and it kind of soils it for you a little bit and you don't you lose that passion but there's also like okay so suddenly you start off with like you know 20 friends help wanting to help you make a film and then you realize how laborious and, and boring it can be or repetitive it can be and suddenly you've got like mike left, yeah. you know at the end who's like you know who's like the only person they have left you know um, yeah i love that scene where oh, he has to oh. he's got no extras he has to get his mum <laughs> to go into the the snowy woods to film a shot, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that that, that shot, the scene where his, his mom sh- uh, filming him um, in the kitchen. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's gold. I mean, that's honestly, you, you, you're like, is this woman? I, I don't know if are, are they aware because it, you know I mean, it's so funny and just so kind of um, slapstick mm. almost. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. I think that that that, that is um, it kind of. You can see that in the passion he has for Northwestern and initially when he tried he's wanting to make his feature is because it's almost trying to get away from the spectre of of the past the last project, you know what I mean? And it's fresh and it's new and it's something he's been trying to even though he's actually started making mm. that before as well. So it's kind of a this kind of juggling thing, you know, where he's trying to keep the passion up for one project and moving across to another. Um it's difficult. Like, it is difficult to keep that passion going over like, a protracted like long period of time. It's um but I mean, he gets it done. You know what I mean? He gets it finished. I mean, I don't know if he, I don't know if he would have finished it if it weren't for the the, the crew following him. To be honest with you, I don't know um, because he really, it really feels like he's having to push um, to get it done. As you see, he has his own obstacle in some points when he, you know he's like whether he's drinking when he's making the yeah. film or you know like and, and probably not you know making his day when it comes to getting the, the, the footage shot. Um, arranging like <laughs> arranging extras what seemed like last minute i don't know if that's like if it was just him trying to get more people to come i don't know um but yeah i mean you, you can't knock him for his his kind of uh resilience and his kind of uh, tenacity yeah i think yeah anyone who's done anything creative will um appreciate the struggles because you've got the dreams of what you want to do but i think what this yeah. film uh depicts really well is life just getting in the way uh, of yeah, that as well. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to go to your whatever your job is. You've got kids, you've got family problems. Um, mm-hmm. You don't have anyone to help you out. You don't have money to do it. Um, so uh, people let you down. Yeah, I think that's right, so you know, I mean? you know, you know yeah. common and universal. Yeah, I mean that's it. When you think of like you know making like films and music and that type of art, where it is collaborative, or at least it's collaborative in, in that you need many people to be able to do it whether that be even just yourself and an actor you know what i mean like right it's like you're still relying on somebody else it's that kind of heartbreak like you know i could go to a room and paint or draw mm. if i could paint or draw well but you know i could still do it it wouldn't be good but like, i could still do it but having that like to rely on someone so heavily or other people so heavily and, and as I say they can let you down or or they can lose passion for it and then suddenly you're bringing in a whole bunch of new people to try and help you finish something you know there's just so many layers to that. It is a miracle that anything ever gets properly made, <laughs> doesn't it? I mean, there's a lot of instances people are being paid to do that, but I've, you know, you find in life that even you can't pay someone enough to do something sometimes <laughs> like, to get them to come and turn up at the right time, you know? And I think it, it also depicts, you know, that uh, turmoil uh, of wanting to be great at something, but also worrying that you're not actually that talented. Um, so that kind of yeah. dilemma think runs through mark as well it's very yeah like i mean never i think anyone who's done any, anything like creative can relate mm. to that <laughs> oh i hope they can i hope it's not just me and you <laughs> <laughs> that, that feel that way a bit in mark 
So obviously, like we've we've got um, Mike, and he's you know he's got he, he's creative in his own right as well. You know, like, I mean, he did the music, oh, yeah. all the music that's featured in the film, um, and that was really like it's this really weird juxtaposition of like kind of this guy who appears to be almost completely vacant, <laughs> at times. but like then he's writing these like you know quite beautiful songs and and able to play the guitar with a blindfold, you know, all these things and just kind of like um, this other side of him that seems to be just kind of not what we're seeing, you know, or like, I, I mean, I don't know, not what the, the drugs have left. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's all that's left him is his talent and his creativity and his, his kind of, his voice. <laughs> Can't move his face though. Um, <laughs> yeah, the music yeah. is incredible. Mike's guitar playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he can play classical pieces on the guitar and it just, it, yeah. it kind of soundtracks the, the, the film perfectly. Um, just really works so well. Uh, there's a I think a back a piece by back that he plays that's just really kind of melancholy and just mm. fits right in. And you just really get this kind of warm and kind of like warm connection between the two guys and this kind of love that they mm. have for each other. You know, um, you know when when we hear later a testimony from Mark when at Thanksgiving that he was really depressed before you know before it might turned up <laughs> and just seeing his face and just seeing how happy he was and it really kind of lifted him up and stuff. Um, you know, th- th- there's a lot of that kind of stuff that, you know, you wonder if we're, like, they just, you know, they just have this love for each other. Um, and kind of talk, I, you know, I do believe they pretty much do anything for each other. It's it's, it's pretty sweet <laughs> and funny and, and, and kind of, um, like, heartbreaking in its own way a little bit. I've shown this film to a couple of people and they've not really got it. And they've said, right, what is funny about it? Are you, like, laughing at the people? And I think, superficially, you know, the film could be seen that way. But I think the more the more you watch it, you know, that you you're laughing along with them, even though you're kind of laughing at their antics and like how crazy they are. Um, sure. I think I feel a real warmth for these people, and although they make me laugh, um, it, it's not in a kind of smug way. I'm not laughing at them at all. No. I think I think what what makes what breaks that for me a little bit is that generally the characters are either telling you a funny story when when you're laughing, right? They are a bit mischief, mischievous because they're being filmed. You know, mm. I'm not saying they're playing up for the, the camera, and or, or that's not them. But they are, they're definitely, you know, like, I'm gonna tell you a funny story, and then they're gonna, ha, 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 you know, so that they they are in on the joke a little bit on of what they're doing, right? Um, or not what they're doing, like what they're telling you, right? Um, but another thing that breaks it for me is that the fact that when when with the gloves incident, right, when when we make sense about the brown gloves, and there's a couple other incidents when Mark cracks <laughs> up at him, right, and you're like, oh, right, so Mark's like pretty funny and kind of strange and just a bit, little bit kind of you know outside of of kind of a uh, the you know the conventional norm or whatever, but Mark's also like finding what we're mm. finding funny funny you know that way he's like laughing as well he's like he can't believe you know that um people are being a little bit like ditzy as well you know um so i think that breaks it for me a little bit you know and it's you're right we're not i don't feel any and I'm, you know, I'm not laughing you know if I, if I saw mike fall down and break his nose i'm not going to laugh at him i'm going to be concerned for mike you know what i mean that's that, that i think that's the difference it's not i'm not laughing at them i'm kind of laughing with them and kind of in and you know it feels like you're kind of in the joke a little bit with them and the life and the kind of the fun that they're having, and they, you know, or the, you know, just the, the you just see crazy antics and the kind of the, their history. <laughs> yeah, I think we should comment on the title as well. I think it's American movie. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think the film has something to say about you know the idea of the American dream, want to having a dream, make it trying to make some of your life climb from the bottom uh, up to the top to. Um, change your life around so I think Mark's uh, enthusiasm Mark's positivity is emblematic of that but at the same time I think what the film does so well is to show the reality of the kind of myth of the American dream and how what actually Mm. um, uh, real life is actually like you know it's a a really well depicted slice of kind of unfiltered reality Um, Mm. but I think it's what's so interesting is Mark's kind of 
uh, indefatigability. You know, he can't not be beat down. He's still got that dream that he's gonna he's gonna make it. Maybe he's sort of talking it up for the cameras, but uh, I think that's what the film yeah. makes the film so great that it's able to balance those two things. It's sort of a critique of the American dream, but also a celebration of it at the same time. I get the impression from Mark that he is, he is, I do feel that he is knowledgeable of what he's talking about. He, know, he knows exactly how to do what he's, he's talking about, you know, and, um, you know, he knows the like, parts of the business side of things and trying to, so, you know, I think given the resources, I do have, I, I do feel he could, he could pull it off, you know, because um, he's, he's not, he's not an idiot. He's, 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 he's just, um, He's just kind of trapped in his situation a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, I think we should say as well, they're shooting on film as well. Yeah, yeah. And it's crazy when you see them having to edit well, that, it and the amount of yep. labour, extra labour that goes into actually working on film and, compared with digital. And Mark's doing it, Mike's doing it. I can't remember, sorry, there's yeah. another friend's name, the guy that got out of jail at one point. Oh, Ken Keane. Ken Keane. Yeah. Um, his mum's yeah. helping, you know. Like, yeah. And, and the, 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 yeah, that's a... That's a that's a scary prospect for 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 my mind to think about. You know, cutting actual film. That's like um, yeah, and there's a the brilliant scene when they they lose two frames. Yes, uh-huh, of film. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. They're scrolling through. Oh, where did yeah. those two frames go? They seem in those moments like you know again they they they're so plausible and perfectly legitimate filmmakers. You know, you, you know. So I think that really like helps the credibility and the kind of um, thing. But as you say, it's it. <sighs> It really then you're like the, you're you're hitting the face with the reality of him trying to sell this this short film for fourteen ninety five per copy you know like um it's it's pretty you know and again it, it come back to like the kind of heartbreaking nature of that that he really does lay on thick like that this is his kind of chance this is his shot and he's but I mean I don't know I don't know I, I've I've seen his kind of um you know his stuff on online things like that he's still got a few films that are kind of been in production since the late 90s and stuff so i don't know yeah. <laughs> he's been in a few films as well he was he was actually you know mark's been in uh, he was in a jet lee film called the one right uh, and yeah yeah Cabin fever 2 which I'd, i've seen but i've only seen it once but I, I, apparently he was in Cabin Fever 2 so you know um i think i was looking because they apparently uh, they had a mark the mark and mike show for a while online right yeah i, never, I couldn't, couldn't find any clips of it or anything like that but um but yes no i never caught any of that um yeah. But uh, I know the 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 cameo in Family Guy as well. That's right. Yes. Uh, yeah. I Mark that. and Mike. Aye. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's a shame. I, I watched one interview with him on a podcast, maybe from about five five to ten years ago, mm. and he was talking about yeah, he sort of had given up filmmaking, right. uh, which was a bit of a shame. Mm-hmm. Um. So he only ever finished Coven. Uh, which is on the American DVD right, right, right. that I've got, uh, which is a treat. Um, <laughs> but it's a shame because actually the, the the footage of them looks incredible. They yeah, really stark, yeah, uh, black and white. I did think a lot of the cinematography that's, that's showcased in the in the in American movie of his films looks really good. I mean, I don't know. I know he didn't shoot it all, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> I don't know if it was Mike that shot some of it or not, but he didn't seem to know what he was doing with the camera. But <laughs> but I thought, yeah, it was really it looked good. I was really, you know, it, you know, you see that even the trailer opens with shots of Coven, um, and you're like, whoa, this look, yeah, this does feel like kind of because he describes it like he's trying, like he's doing a kind of Night of the Living Dead type thing. You know, that's kind of I think where he's coming at uh, with from from his heart anyway. Um, so he does kind of achieve that, and I think yeah, it would be interesting to see what. What he could have done, given the, the means. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The American Dream part of it for me is, yeah, it's it's quite a contrast to what the the uh, what what you you know what you see. I mean, you, know, you see him driving about, uh, trying to pick lift his mood. He goes and visits the houses, the big nice houses and stuff like that. You know, and then and then immediately insults them saying he doesn't want one like this he wants the flatter <laughs> one and not this is garish um so yeah i do you, and, and like yeah, some of the animosity to like his, his mum and stuff like that later you really do get his like the, the beginnings of possibly some and maybe what led him to stop making films like the bitterness that he maybe has mm. um you know he's saying that he's not, he doesn't want to be like her mm. you know working 95 or you know all that kind of 
like rage against the machine type thing, you know, like the 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 way that um, he doesn't want to work at the the funeral parlor and stuff like that. Um, so I could definitely see him getting you know getting pissed off with it and stuff. So I think that's where you kind of that's where it grabs you and it takes away from the you know it's not just we're it's not just a laugh film you know you know what I mean mm. it, it, a fun you know a funny film it's it really does start to tug at the heart of things. So my final thoughts on American Movie. It's one of the greatest documentaries ever made, in my opinion. Hilarious, emotional, sad, inspiring. For anyone who has, uh, you know, tried to be creative, I'm sure you'll get some out of it. Um, incredible characters. Incredible. This was caught on film, endlessly uplifting. Yeah, man, I, I've got to agree. Um, don't think I can really add much to that. I think it really does. Yeah, as you say, if you, anyone has ever tried to make something. Will will find find a little of themselves in here, whether they want to admit it or not, um, and I think that's what that's what helps the kind of the fun and the, kind of the funny moments of the film, uh, and really helps it strike home. I mean, you know, the best comedies like it's funny because it's real. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's 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 what you know. Why a lot of these things work, um, and as you say, it's amazing that they managed to capture this, um, and that it isn't a scripted film. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, because it's uh, it's just insane. <laughs> no, I really really uh, appreciate you bringing it to my attention. I think it's it's definitely one I'll watch again with yes. some fondness. So you've been listening to Cinema Subculture. If you'd like more of this content, please make sure you've subscribed on YouTube, like the video, and hit the notification bell. So thanks for listening. I've been Simon. I've been Gary. It's all right. It's okay. There's something to live for. Jesus told me so. It was a nightmare. <laughs>